Hey, this is John Garrett, hypertransitory.com, and uh, today I'm going to be talking about the 3D effects you can use in Illustrator, uh, specifically version CS4, but I'm sure CS5 and uh, I believe uh, CS3 has the same effects within it. Um, normally, when I'm doing 3D, I, uh, I use a standalone program called uh, Blender, which is a free uh, open source program. But um, a lot of people, they, uh, they know Illustrator. They don't really feel the need to go learn another standalone program, especially one that's you know, admittedly a bit complex like Blender. So they just want to know what they can do with an Illustrator to maybe add a little pop to their logo design. Now, some of the effects you're going to see uh, are some common ones that I, you, know, you see in effects all the time. And, and uh, we'll start with... Uh, Normally when I'm going to do this, right now I've got the edges shown here. I'm going to go to view and I'm going to hide those edges. I don't want them in the way when I'm testing my 3D. I'm going to move this over because i got a small monitor here, so bear with me on that. And we're going to go to the effect menu, go down to 3D, and let's start with rotate. Well, this is a common effect that you're going to see. Now, uh, normally you, you can see this is the front, this is the top, and this is the side. And it kind of starts you off with this off axis front um, cause that's a common sort of a uh, look that you see and if I hit the preview button we're gonna see that uh, normally I like to start with the front and then I'll move it around myself but one of these um, may be just what you're looking for one of these presets uh, so you can go through and just take a look at those normally not quite good enough uh, I mean I'll take a look here I uh, kinda just move it around the way I want um, and let's say I start with that. And uh, I mean, normally you'll see kind of a logo kind of shooting off into the background, uh, receding into the distance. You can't really get that. I mean, it doesn't look that way now because we don't have any perspective on it. But when I add perspective, we're going to see that real perspective showing up there. And that's something you see a lot. And you can, um, if I click OK here, that's what I'm going to get. Now, now, uh, viewing my outline mode, the text itself or the, the you know, artwork itself hasn't really changed because this uh, uh, has not really been applied. It's a live effect. But here's what you're going to see. And I have my edges hidden now. So, But now you can see that's the real artwork there. And this is the effect that's applied to it. So um, this might be good enough for you. A lot of times, a, a rotate does not really add much uh, stress onto your computer. It's not really a very uh, high level computation to do uh, unless you start adding in other 3D effects um, like the extrusion and that's one that I'll show. Now let's say that you really like this this particular uh, angle that you've picked. Now you've got to, if you want to keep that, uh, if you apply another effect then it's going to be hard to get that back unless you specifically notate what you got. If you remember from before, I said in order to do that, you're going to have to go back to your appearance panel. And I want to go back to the same 3D rotate that I just did. I don't want to apply a new one. I want to check this one. So I'm going to double click it. These are the values that we've got in here. So you're going to want to notate these. Just write them down. You know, this is your perspective. And uh, you know, click cancel. So that's what you got. But now, uh, if we want to do some extrusion, so I'm going to go to 3D. I'm going to extrude and bevel. Actually, first I'm going to hide my edges again. So I'm going to go to uh, 3D, extrude and bevel. And here's this warning that uh, I had mentioned in another uh, section. So this is OK this time. We're going to apply a new effect. That's the only way to do it. Now, if I was dead set on that other angle, on this angle I've got here, I would type in these values here so that would be fine but I mean for this I'm gonna just go ahead and do whatever I want um, now what's gonna happen here is it's extruding and that means kinda of shooting off the edges of this it's gonna it's gonna you know give me some depth to this logo and if I hit the preview button you know, we'll see that so now this is my angle and um, you know if you wanted that other angle you'd have to type in make sure you kept that so we can see I've got a depth of 50 here, which I can decrease uh, if I want less. 
and we'll see that yeah so now I got less there if I want it more and I, I can uh, get even more than that probably not necessary I mean that's probably pretty good right there so I can keep that there um, actually let me just move this up a little bit I see more under the bottom there and we can see that um, I have um, a shading color of black so it's darkening in there you can choose whatever color you want for that and let's say that I want this under here defined a little bit more you can see I've got a light source on here my light source is hitting the front of that as we can see so if I want some more light under the bottom maybe to define this a little bit more I'm gonna need to add another light source with this button and so I'm gonna add that now I've got a bunch of light coming like straight on there so I'm gonna move this new one to the bottom so you can see it's really um, lighting up that bottom there let's actually get rid of it once so you see how much light that it was providing I'm gonna bring bring that back and just put that under the bottom and you can go over here and take down the intensity of that you can play around with the values over here to uh, you know do what you need to do to make the logo pop as much as you want so uh, I'll tell you one another thing in here that I I actually tend to avoid is this bevel I've rarely found the bevel to work um, in a way that I wanted you know let's just click the the most the least complex uh, bevel you got and probably you're gonna get something like this it's gonna be kinda crazy and it and it doesn't work out your design has to be uh, of a certain uh, I don't know I, I noticed that narrow points near each other generate this bevel self intersection that you don't want and um, a lot of times it just doesn't work out let me take it down to one and see what happens you know a lot of times you just can't get a decent result I mean it looks readable at least now but but some of it is not obviously not working out so I tend to avoid using that bevel at all if it really seems like a design might call for some kind of bevel I mean I'll do it in blender um, if you don't um, want to deal with that I mean you can all you can uh, uh, try to avoid those bevels in your design uh, or else you might have to build them in manually somewhere where it uh, you know where you won't have to deal with this so assuming I want this I'm gonna get rid of this this bevel though because I don't want that on there but assuming I want this uh, I'll click OK on that and so now I have got uh, a 3d extrude and bevel and a 3d rotate um, as you can see here both of those are being applied so uh, if I go to my outline view this is really what I've got this is really what's real here you know and this is a live effect these I got two live effects that are applied so if I wanted to um, let's turn my edges back on with command H if I wanted to then apply these effects I would have to go into my object menu and expand the appearance from the appearance palette that we just saw so now those effects are not live anymore they're gone and they're they're applied and that's what I got now this is this is what I got so selecting this you can see that, man it's a that's a bunch of points in there and this is something you got to be careful of when you are uh, using this 3d or, or anything I mean a lot of points are going to uh, probably adversely affect your your ripping uh, ripping time and also your um, uh, your file size I mean normally vectors are going to be smaller than rasters but but when you got a lot of points it becomes kind of complex for a rip or that's rasterized image processing where it takes a vector and it turns it into a raster to be printed because vectors really can't be printed directly but um, you don't want to choke up a rip that's called choking it up when you got a bunch of these points that it's got to chug on and it's got to convert them all into pixels so you got to be aware of that too um, to try to cut down problems potential problems in the future sometimes there's not much you can do I mean most rips today I mean this is not gonna choke a rip but depending on how many like if you've got a package or something and that logo has to be on there ten times on the package and it starts multiplying and let's say you then take that one package and you're printing that three or four you know ten up on a sheet then yeah it can start multiplying really quick so you gotta be careful of that but but aside from that I think that uh, that can give you a pretty good basic overview of how to use the 3D effects in Illustrator uh, for your logo projects